the strength of my life, of whom I be afraid. When the wicked comes against me to eat up my flesh, enemy and my foes, they stumble and fail. So an army made me, my heart shall not fear. Though an army, the war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his temple. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes. I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me. And answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, My face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. Out of my salvation. My mother and father forsake me, then the Lord would take care. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have no heart unless I believe that I would see the righteous the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me, and this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, 
when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord would take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the wills of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such have breathed out violence. I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. song that says I lean not on my own understanding and it reminds us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and he will direct your path he will be your comfort he will be your peace and he will be your strength and I hope you're blessed by it I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. And I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make some. 
Nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. Cause I'm holding on to you. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to, cause I'm holding on to you. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. And I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Come on, come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, let's just celebrate our beloved sister. Come on, come on, let's clap our hands. If you believe that our sister, our mother, our, our wife, come on, our daughter, if you believe that she is with our Lord and Savior right now, hallelujah, she's rejoicing right now. I believe if Sister Tanya could speak right now, she would say celebrate for me because I kept the faith. I fought the good fight. Hallelujah. Come on, I kept the faith and I fought the good fight. I finished my course and now I shall wear a crown. Hallelujah. That is laid up in glory for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. Hallelujah, because she finished her course. She fought her good fight. She trusted in you. So, God, we thank you right now for our sister. Hallelujah, God, we give you glory for her life right now, God. Because there's no more suffering. There's no more dying. There's no more pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's rejoicing right now. Laying in the arms of the Father to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we thank you, God, for being faithful to your word, God, because he who started a good work, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we give him glory and we give him honor. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you to the Ford Christian Center. Hallelujah. And we believe anytime that you come to the Ford Christian Center, you will receive our five values. And that is encouragement, support, good counsel, a sound word, and most importantly, Love, And that is what we are here to display to every one of you this morning, this afternoon, is the love of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you, God. Hallelujah, Father, just for who you are to us, Father God, and who you were to Sister Tanya, God. You were a father. You were a keeper of God. You were a sustainer. God, you were a protector and you were a provider, God. And we thank you right now for doing just what your word said in her life, Father God. And we thank you, God, because you will keep, Father, and restore this family, Father. After this day, Father, we will walk away with our heads held up high, trusting in you, Father God. We have come this far by faith, Father God, leaning on the Lord, Father God, and we will not depart, God. And we ask right now, Holy Spirit, to come in and have your way, Father God. Touch every heart. Touch every mind, Father God. Save somebody today with your love and grace, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, Father God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. After that welcome, you ought to be stirred in this place. Any believers in the room? I want to know what company I'm in. Any believers in this room? Because if you're a believer of the Most High God, you ought to understand that this is a day of celebration. This is a day of rejoicing. Our Lord said that we ought to rejoice. We ought to give him praise. We ought to give him thanks because we know where our sister Tanya is. We know, we know, we know. She served faithfully in this house, and she served her Lord with all her soul, mind, and strength. It's something as a pastor to be able to stand before the people of God with confidence, knowing that the person that you're talking about is with the Lord. Amen? I ain't got to make anything go. I, I don't have to tell any lies. I can tell about the goodness that Tanya did here on the earth. Her works are speaking for her right now. If you are celebrating with us, I want you to put your hands together. Give God the glory. He's the one that's worthy to be worshipped. He's the one that is worthy to be adored. None of us are going to get out of here alive. All of us will have to come by this way. But let me encourage you this morning that when you do come by this way, that you know the Lord Jesus. And so our sister Tanya, she's celebrating. I looked at the program, and this said this is a celebration of life. So are we going to stick to that? The program said this is a celebration of life. Anybody come to celebrate? I know we're going to miss Sonya. Ooh, yes, that smile. Yes, she put the F in fashion. Yes, she is my dear sister. And we love her with all of our heart. But today, it's about celebrating her. Today is about remembering the things, the, the person of who she was, the love that she exemplified, the love that she carried, the servant that she was, the one who would come and clean this very church, the one who would serve and greet people in these very doors. I'm talking about my sister, my daughter in the gospel, Tanya Williams. So today... We will bring before you our reading of scripture, and it's going to be an Old Testament reading by Pastor Terry Whitty, and then we'll have a New Testament reading by Minister Darian Tarver. Old Testament, Psalm 73. Verse 24, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and forward receive me in the glory. Who have I in heaven but thee? There is none above earth that I desire to be beside thee. My flesh, my heart fails, but God is my strength of my heart and my portion forever. I had read from you Psalms. 73 verses 24 through 26. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and most especially the doers of his most holy word. Amen. Good evening, families and friends. I'm reading the New Testament, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, and it reads, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with the joy and peace because you trust in him, then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for his word. His word was intended to encourage us. So now we will have reflections 
of a friend um, from Leah Mahoney. She's coming for you. Good morning. Tanya was my bestie and my sister in Christ. I literally could stand up here and talk about her for hours and hours as she was such a lighthouse in my life. But I won't because the program says two minutes only. We met through our college internship at Trinity Rescue Mission while we were both pursuing the callings on our heart to help others. Within the first hour of serving together at the homeless shelter, we laughed and cried and felt as if we'd known each other our entire lives. Our foundation through Christ created a bond that can never be severed. Tanya was love. As every soul that came up to us at the shelter felt her kindness, understanding and acceptance that she deposited into each one of their hearts. They always felt Christ's light envelope them in his infinite love as I watched them hug and thank her for more than I can, more times than I can count. Tanya and I shared so many moments over our shifts, and my most favorite of those is when we would stop in the middle of the stairwell, and we would reach into each other and share our live challenges and join hands and turn to God in prayer. We always laughed with each other, wondering if God ever got tired of hearing from us. Thank goodness he didn't, and he never does. Tanya embodied joy in such a way that her spiritual fruit had fruit. Anyone who spent any amount of time with her knew how much joy her whole family brought her and how much joy she sprinkled over everyone's lives that God brought across her path. Her joy always came back to her as she felt so blessed with the love she had from her family and George and Charlize. Speaking of George and Charlize and Tanya, one of my favorite memories is when we were moving them last year and Tanya's rack of clothes, her fashion, and her purses and her hats not her wigs we didn't get to those yet <laughs> but we just knew we could move it out of their house as quick as possible and doggone it we did praise jesus it didn't fall apart until after we got to the new house <laughs> which i think took her a couple weeks to get up the stairs <laughs> when tanya and our girlfriend nicola who we also met through college in our internship would do lunches we'd get together quarterly because, you know, life gets busy and we have a hard time scheduling. We would lose five and a half hours and three seconds. Husbands would be texting. Boyfriends would be texting. Where are you guys at? I'm sorry, we lost a few hours. But Nicole and I were lifting each other up the other day as we're all walking through this together and celebrating her. And we were reflecting about Tanya's smile being so contagious and how amazing her sense of style was. I always wished it would rub off on me. It didn't. <laughs> How she could shop and it brought her such joy. And then she was always shopping for others and brought them joy. And Tanya's amazing wigs, which we secretly, I always secretly, would sit there and go, which one was she going to choose? And which, which part of God's given beauty was this one going to highlight? Tanya was, our, was God's gift to all of us. And our lives will forever be better because we knew her. And she loved us in the Christ-like fashion that she was. The scripture that God hugs me with at times like this is Philippine, or Philippians 4-7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're celebrating with you, Tanya. How many felt the love from the words that she shared? That was genuine. That was from the heart. A friend, a friend that knows uh, the heart of a friend. Uh, I was also supposed to assign a sister in Christ uh, to share. And so many people love Tanya so much. I asked around and I asked around and I asked around and it was, oh, I can't do it. I won't be able to stand. I won't be able to hold up. That said to me, that everybody loved Tanya. She's such a dear woman of God. 
George, you had an awesome woman of God. Awesome. And she loved you like none other. She said, I married the man of my dreams. <laughs> and I thank God for her. Uh, now we will have reflections uh, or acknowledgments, I apologize. Acknowledgments and letters, uh, resolutions read by Minister Christia Tarver. Resolution for Sister Tanya Williams, a beloved partner of our congregation. We are here today comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelations chapter 21, verse 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all the tears and, uh, from our eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Tanya Williams, a partner of the Ford Christian Center, passed from this life on March 21, 2001. To many, it may seem too soon, but the all-knowing God, it was his perfect time for Tanya to be called home to dwell with him in the glories of paradise. The pastors and staff of the Ford Christian Center offer our sincere condolences to the family. Your sorrow is our sorrow. Your hurt is our hurt, and your loss is our loss as well. Tanya was a dear spiritual daughter and sister in Christ. Tanya was devoutly in the ministry in various ways. First, she was on, on our first touch greeting ministry, our roads outreach ministry, and our environmental services, which was clean in the church. She served she performed her service to God on this earth and offered her service to the church for a greater honor and glory of his kingdom. She served unreservedly and in spirit of humility, always with a smile. She was a faithful giver, server, and worshiper of God. Her life is one that exemplified a true love of Christ. We have been blessed to have her as part of our life and congregation. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the bereaved family in our common bond of grief and remembrance of a, of a beloved soul. And therefore, be it resolved that we bow in acceptance of the, perf the perfection of God's plan to gather each of us in his mercy, merciful arms, when we have fulfilled our task here on this earth. A copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy will be kept here at the church archives in memory of our beloved sister, Tanya Williams. In the words of John chapter 14, verses one through three, it tells us, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you that. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you will be also. Be at peace in the everlasting love of our Lord. Respectfully submitted on this day, the 27th day of March, 2021, on behalf of the pastors, ministers and partners of the Ford Christian Center, Jacksonville, Florida. Sincerely, with love, Pastors Charles and Azalea Williams. On behalf of the Ford Christian Center First Touch Greetings Ministry, we would like to take the opportunity to honor Tanya Williams. Tanya exemplified excellence while she served. She welcomed everyone with a radiant smile and her loving spirit when they came into our service. Tanya also used her God-given gift to encourage others as she greeted them. Tanya was definitely intentional when she served. Tanya was truly an example of how to love and serve others, and her example is an inspiration to others that serve. Tanya's service and commitment will forever be remembered and greatly appreciated. With love, the First Touch Greeting Ministry. 
acknowledgement. We, the family of the late Tanya Thompson Williams, humbly wish to acknowledge with deep appreciation the many expressions of love, concern, and kindness shown to us during the passing of our loved one. May God forever bless each of you in our prayer. The family of the late Tanya Thompson Williams. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for that again. As we prepare our hearts for worship, I want to take this time to have everyone read silently the obituary. Amen. And now we'll have the worship team of the Ford Christian Center. We sing the song that says that the Lord is our shepherd. He goes before us. He's our defender, our help. Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He says he goes before me. He goes before me. He's a defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Sing, I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. Sing, no weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. So I won't fear. I won't fear. Oh, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone. I am not alone. Yeah, oh Lord, we know that he's our comfort. And he always holds me close. Always holds me close. 
Somebody say, he always guides me. Say, he always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. Sing, his joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. It restores my soul. Restores my soul. We sing mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness. He gives me assurance. Gives me assurance. Oh Lord, that I'll see your glory. That I'll see his glory. Face to face, face to face. We sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we're not alone. I am not alone. Oh, we know that he is our Your spirit lives within me. Help me say it. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your so peace. So I will walk in your peace. See, your spirit lives within your me. Your spirit lives within me. See, my victory. My victory. My victory. My victory. See, your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your so peace. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. Your spirit lives within me. Sing my victory, my victory, my victory. My victory. Sing your spirit, your spirit lives within so me. So I will walk in your so peace. I will walk in your, your spirit peace. lives within your me. Spirit Breathe deep. Breathe deep. 
Know that he is good. He's a love. He's a love I know of. Oh, we say, I will lean back. I will lean back. In the loving arms. Of my, of my beautiful father. It's who you are, it's who you are. Oh, breathe deep. And know that he is good. He's a love. He's a love like no Come on, let's give God some praise here in this place. Hallelujah. Do anybody believe that the Lord is their shepherd? Hallelujah. If you believe that, go ahead and put your hands together and let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. In this place, thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being there, leading us, guiding us. Hallelujah. Being that way maker like only you can. Father God, we thank you for who you are. Amen, amen. I thank God for that song. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians. And I just want to thank God for his presence that I feel in this place. I am Pastor Charles, a pastor here at the Forward Christian Center. And I have the great privilege uh, to share words of comfort uh, for Tanya Williams, the beloved Tanya Williams, my daughter in the gospel. She was a true daughter. She loved God. She served God. Uh, she was a faithful uh, partner here at the Forward Christian Center. And I just want to express my love for her. Uh, it hits different when it's one of your own. Yeah, yeah, she was one of us. And because of that, I just thank God that I have the privilege. I do thank God for Mamie. I thank God for George, uh, Charlize. Uh, the family and friends that are here. And I believe that song is befitting because I'm going to take uh, the words of comfort from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. That's where the text will be coming from. So for those that want to turn to it, uh, we're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 23. Some of you all may not even have to turn to it because you have it hid in your heart. Yeah, yeah, you got it hid in your heart. So I'm just going to read the pages that's on the inside of your heart for those that are saved, sanctified, filled with Holy Spirit. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yeah, yeah, I think I got a church this morning. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Yeah, for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And surely, I'll say it one more time, surely, for the third time, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your power, your anointing that's here in this place. Thank you for Holy Spirit that's moving abroad, even as I speak, to comfort the hearts and, Lord God, and to allow peace to flood the hearts and minds of your people. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for saturating this atmosphere, Lord God. And as I share these words of comfort, Lord God, let it fall on good ground. Bring forth a harvest, Lord God, through the grief and through the trauma that many of us have experienced. It is your word that gives us the life that we need. Hallelujah. To keep on living. And Father God, I step aside and that way you can step forward and get the glory in all that I say and do. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. And the church said.
and amen. And I'm going to speak to you from the thought, we should live like it's our last day. Live like it's our last day. Here in the book of Psalms, it is written by arguably one of the greatest psalmists of all time. A man by the name of David or affectionately known as King David. He pins the book of Psalms, chapter 23, in such a way to where he's talking about a relationship that he has with the Lord. He starts off by saying that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I believe because David was a man after God's own heart, he had a certain relationship with the Lord. And it was this. He believed that the Lord was his shepherd and that he would lead him and that he would guide him and that he would help him along the way and even navigate him in this thing called life. I believe Tanya, if she was here, she can relate to old King David's psalm. Because at the end of the day, Tanya would stand up here in this pulpit and declare that the Lord was her shepherd too. Yes, he was there to lead her. He was there to guide her. He was there to help her along the way. He was even there to be there at the end of her journey. Because Tanya was one of those ones that would live like it was her last day. Yes. And as I began to read the book of Psalms, the Lord began to speak to me and he talked to me and he began to say, secondly, we can see in the book of Psalms where it says that David had a relationship with the Lord where the Lord was his shepherd and he was the sheep. Yeah, yeah, it was a shepherd sheep relationship. I'm not a farmer, but I believe that in order for a shepherd to be a bona fide shepherd, he got to have some sheep that he's tending to. And let me flip the script. In order for that sheep to be a bona fide sheep, that sheep got to have a shepherd that it's connected to. And likewise, we can see here in the book of Psalms where it's not just talking about the sheep and shepherd. It's more so talking about the relationship that the sheep had with the shepherd and the shepherd had with the sheep. Because at the end of the day, in order for us to be saved, we got to have a relationship with the shepherd and the sheep got to have that connection with him. Yes, I'm not talking about religion because a lot of folks, they're religious and they go to the church, but they're not the church. Yeah, they like to attend the church because their friends and their families and their loved ones go to the sanctuary in the house of God. But I'm talking about the ones that have a relationship with the shepherd when they can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I believe that was our dear beloved Tanya. John 10 and 27 says, just my sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. Yes, yeah, one of the testaments that I can say about Tanya is that she can hear the voice of God and she followed the Lord. She didn't just talk the talk, but she walked the walk. So when I begin to look at Tanya's life, I can see how much Tanya, she loved God. And without a shadow of a doubt, God loved her. That's what this whole Psalms 23 is all about. It's about relationship. It's about a person loving God so much to where he saves them. Romans 8 and 35 says it like this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution shall famine or I'll say it like this COVID-19 shall nakedness shall peril or sword but it goes on to say yet in all these things we are more than a conqueror through him who loved us that's that relationship right there for I am fully persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels or principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, nor height or depth, nor anything created shall be able to separate me from the love of God. The reason why I'm up here to, today and I'm able to preach and I'm able to say that Tanya was saved and it is because she loved God. It was not no religion, but it was a relationship. And it says no matter what you go through in life, your ups, your downs, your ins and outs, it will be nothing that's going to separate you from the love of God. And that is the love that the shepherd has for the sheep. 
and the sheep have for the shepherd. Paul shows us the power of love here and that the love that God has for us. And I'm here today to let everybody know that those that are saved, once you're saved, you're saved. And you don't have to worry about being unsaved if you're saved for real. And those that have that relationship with the Most High God, that shepherd-sheep relationship, it is a relationship that will stand the test of time. And although most people have funerals like this, this is not a funeral. This is a home-going celebration. Because of the relationship that Tanya had with God, her death is nothing more than the transportation into the bosom of the Most High God. And that's the power of love. And that's the power of love that Tanya expressed because not only did she live like it was her last day, she loved God like it was her last day. Yeah, she loved God like it was her last day. Many Sundays, I would come in to the sanctuary and I would see old Tanya dressed to the tee like only Tanya could. She would look good. She would smell good. Yeah, yeah, she would give God her best. She was one of the ones that would not come before God any kind of way. But she always put on her best face, and she put her best foot forward, and she looked her best, and she served her best, because that's who Tanya was. I heard my wife say Tanya was the one that put the F into fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see her styling and profiling up in the streets of gold right now. But, but when, I, when I think about Tanya, I think about when I used to come in, and some days I would know her. And other days, I would think she's a first-time visitor. <laughs> because sometimes she would have on a short wig. I should have said hat, but it's a wig. She, sometimes she would have on a long wig, bushy wig, sometimes no wig. But through it all, Tanya would always look her best because that was the life that she wanted to exude, to give God her best, to live like it was her last day, to love like it was her last day. And most importantly, she served like it was her last day. Luke 10 and 27 says this. So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, and with all of thy strength. Tanya did that. She was a faithful daughter, a faithful servant, a faithful lover. As a matter of fact, she was a part of the first touch team. She was part of the cleaning team. She was a part of the rose ministry. Tanya was one of those ones that would make pastoring easy. I said it like this. If I had a church full of Tanyas, we can do a little bit more over here on the new north side of town. I'm talking about a true daughter, one that was faithful in her time, faithful in her talent, faithful in her treasure, faithful with who she was to the things of God. And I remember coming in one day and she shared with us that she received a bad bill of health from the doctor. She said the doctor had diagnosed her with stage four cancer. She told us as pastor, she said, could you keep this confident? I don't want anyone to know I don't want anyone to know what was going on. But through it all, Tanya never let that stop her from living her best life now. And this is something that we can take courage in. That even though you're going through your situations right now, even though you're feeling what you're feeling right now, you, it shouldn't stop you from living your best life now. Every day that the Lord gives us is precious. Every day that the Lord gives us is valuable. And if Tanya was here today, she would let you know that no matter what you're going through, don't let that stop you from living your best life now. Don't let that stop you from serving your best life now. Don't let nobody stop you from serving the God 
that she served. So if I can say something, Tanya, she was a fighter. Yeah, she was a fighter. She was one of those ones that would put her trust in the things of God. She would put her hope in the Lord. And although she had something going on in her body, she didn't let that stop her from being her, the best version that she can be. In other words, Tanya, she fought the good fight of faith. And although she experienced that negative report, she kept on living life. And nobody on the outside could tell. And I believe Tanya is cluing us in on how we should live because a lot of times people want to have a pity party and they want to bring this person into their situation and that person in their situation. But can I say you need to have that inner strength that Tanya exuded and love God and serve God like it was her last day. So she didn't let that counsel stop her from marrying the man of her dream. She didn't let that cancer stop her from giving guidance and support to Charlize. She didn't let that cancer stop her from taking care of Mamie. She didn't let that cancer stop her from loving on all her friends and all her family that's here today. She didn't let that cancer stop her from coming and serving into the house of the Lord. And I believe that's a great testament because it's a sign of her inner strength. And it is something that David said in the book of 23, where, 23 of Psalms where he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You got to believe, David, when he began to pen this, he began to write it in such a way to where he said, Even though I might be in the valley of the shadow of death. Valley in the shadow of the death of Tanya. Valley in the shadow of death of my spiritual daughter Tanya. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. It wasn't until my wife and I we went to the Smoky Mountains to where I fully understood what David wrote when he said yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death there was a waterfall that my wife and I we wanted to see but the waterfall was on the other side of the mountain and in order for us to get there we had to go up one side of the mountain then down through the valley but while we were walking I started to get famished, started to lose strength, didn't feel like I was at my best, and I actually felt like turning around, but I looked along the pathway, and I saw a branch that someone made into a rod, and I grabbed that branch. And I began to track on a little bit farther. That branch gave me some added support. That branch, it helped me navigate through the terrain and the, and the rocks. That branch, it helped me along the way. And to say the least, I was able to make it to the destination that I was supposed to make it to. And this is what David was saying in the text. That although some of y'all are in the valley of the shadow of the death of Tanya Williams, you need to start looking on the side of the road for the branch, for the rod, his staff, that's going to comfort you along the way. And although some of y'all are feeling some type of way, and it's okay to feel that way, you better believe, you better grab hold to the word of God, and it will be the word of God, his rod, and his staff that's going to comfort you. And when you feel like giving up, it's his rod, and it's his staff that's going to comfort you. When the tears are flowing and you don't know where to turn, it's going to be his rod, and it's going to be his staff that's going to comfort you. And you're going to make it through the grief that you're experiencing right now. 
But all you got to do is keep on walking. And when I saw this, it reminded me of how precious the Lord is to us in our life. And I'll say this as I close. Although we're experiencing grief, although things don't feel good, this is where the Lord says he's going to comfort you. And David said it like this, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll say it one more time because this is how y'all going to get through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David has given us the key that although you're going through this right now, never stop walking. Never stop walking. Some of y'all, y'all might be faster than others getting through this. Some steps are bigger than others. But whatever you do, don't stop walking. Don't stop taking steps. Because the more steps you take, the more God will start taking those steps for you. It will be his rod. It will be his staff. That's going to give you the comfort that you need. And as I close, Tanya, of course, she loved her family. I know without a shadow of a doubt, she loved her family. She loved her husband, George. She loved her friends. She loved her family. She loved her mom. God was good to Tanya. God was good to Tanya. I saw her life transform right before our eyes. It's amazing how God, he will orchestrate certain things on our behalf. God was working behind the scenes. Doctor gave her an evil report, but she chose to believe the report of the law. And in that, she was able to marry the man of her dreams in the middle of a cancerous situation. She was able to do what she needed to do still for her mother whom she loved so much. She was still able to serve the Lord with all of her heart, soul, mind, and strength because she loved like it was her last day. She lived like it was her last day. She served like it was her last day. And that's where David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The final days that we had with Tanya, Tanya expressed to us her heart was content with the life she lived. I know many of us, we pray to keep her alive because that's what believers do. We pray and we believe God. But she spoke something to us as pastors. And let me share this. She said, Pastor, I'm satisfied. She said, Pastor, I'm satisfied. In other words, she said, Pastor, my life was good. I lived like it was my last day. I loved like it was last, my last day. I served like it was my last day. And I'm satisfied with the life that God gave me. Although I didn't have a longer time to spend with my husband, I'm still satisfied that God gave me the desires of my heart. And he said that he'll do it when our ways please him. And this has given us great hope that even when the chips are against you, God can still move in your life like never before and give you the very thing that you have been desiring for him. Yes, yeah, Tanya said she was satisfied. And I believe old Paul, he said it best. He said in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have 
kept the faith. That's what Tanya was saying. Hey, I'm satisfied. I've done everything that I can do. I serve God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it is nothing else that I have to give to him. So as I close, I want to encourage each and every one of you all. Don't just go through the day. Live like it's your last day. Live like it's your best day. Life is nothing more than a vapor. We got to make the best with what God has given us. Get rid of all of these trivial disagreements. Get rid of all of these, these uh, things and where you're offended with this person and that person. Let that stuff go. Because in order to live your best life, you got to live like it's your last day. You can't hold unforgiveness for anybody. But you got to live this thing clean before the Most High God. So as I close, hallelujah, I'm going to close in prayer. Every heart, hallelujah, open every eye closed. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for this time that we have to share together. We thank you, Lord God, for the life of my daughter, Tanya Williams. I thank you, Lord God, for the work that you have started in her. Because just as your word says, you're faithful to finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. Right now, she's in heaven. You said in your word, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. And you have gone to prepare that place just for her, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving us that hope and giving us that promise. I pray, Lord God, that you'll begin to wipe the tears from her family's eyes. Wipe the tears from Mamie's eyes. Wipe the tears from George's eyes. Wipe the tears from Charlize's eyes, her and immediate family and her extended family. Do what only you can do. And Father God, I thank you. Hallelujah for doing just that. And giving us the courage to live our last day just as our beloved sister Tanya did. Hallelujah. We stand encouraged. And Father God, we thank you for who you are. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. One more thing. There may be someone out there you haven't given your life to Jesus. You've heard this message. You've heard how Tanya was able to live her best life now. You heard how she was able to give her heart to Jesus. And because of that, she's in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord may be pricking your heart right now. Some of you all may have heard of the Lord. Some of you all may have uh, gone to church. But until you know Jesus personally as your Lord and Savior, you can't make it in. But at this time, I want to give you an opportunity to receive our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if that's you, just stick your hand up. If that's you, just stick your hand up. Hallelujah. God moves. He touches our heart. He touches our mind. Amen. Hallelujah. So we all say... All, all right, let's give God some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise up in here. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank God for what he's done. Amen. We love you. And keep on moving forward. Your name, you lift me up. Come on, these your strength this morning. You lift me up, God. You lift me up. Come on and say, say in the, in the fullness Come on, just begin to wave your hand all over this place. Grace. Say in the power, in the power of Come on here, begin to lift you up. You lift you up. You lift me up. Oh, say he lift me up. You lift me up. Come on and say, you are my No other. Strength like no other. Strength 
strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches, reaches me. Come on, you are my hope. You are my hope. You are my hope. Hope like no other. You're hope my hope for tomorrow. Like no other. Say hope like no other. Hope like no other. And it reaches, reaches me. Come on and say one more time. You are my hope. You are my hope. Say hope like hope like no other. See hope like no other. Hope like no other. See it reaches, reaches. Come on, in the fullness. Come on, let's say, say in the in the fullness of your grace. See in the power. mountains stronger than mountains it's deeper than oceans deeper than oceans and it reaches is that love that has drawn me come on and say it one more time is your unfailing love your unfailing love stronger than mountains stronger than